Jesus, we love you. Now we just like to tell you that we love you. Now you are God. You are the very God. And you are the man. Now we love you because of this. In you we see God. And we find God. And we obtain God. And in you we see man. We see proper man. Now we worship you that today you are on the throne. We worship you. Amen. We worship you as the exalted man on the throne of God. Amen. Now, how we thank you that today Amen. we are preaching you. Amen. We are declaring you. Amen. We are ministering you to all the needy ones. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We do exalt you Amen. in such a meeting. Amen. We exalt you. Amen. You are God's exalted head. Amen. And you are our Lord of Lords. Amen. Now we give you all our glory. Amen. Now thank you for your redemption. Amen. Thank you for your life. Amen. Thank you for whatever you are. Amen. In your precious name we worship you. Amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I do believe uh, you all have to know that uh, to speak something about the uh, world situation in the uh, meeting of the saints is uh, the hardest thing. It's not so easy. You know, uh, once I didn't, I did say. You just talk a little bit about politics in your meeting. This may make you know more of the church. So this morning, I'm very risky. <laughs> I'm a little concerned that after the message this morning, someone will say, Brother Lee speaking this morning has made us know more of the church. But you have to realize the church comes out of the world. That means the church comes out of the mankind. If you are going to have the proper church life, you must know the world. And you must know the mankind. Here we have on the board as the main part of our subject is the world situation. And this tells you that I am not going to talk to you about the world. Neither I'm going to tell you something concerning mankind. No. My burden is to talk about a situation. You have to underline the word situation. This morning and tomorrow morning, we will spend as much as time as we can on a certain situation. Not the situation of your school. Not the situation of your family. Not the situation between you and your wife. A lot of situations, right? Many, many situations are around us. Not the situation of your closings, a pair of shoes, Sunday morning service head for the ladies, you know. <laughs> of course, not so much on the West Coast, but very much on the East Coast, especially in those New England states. Oh, every lady has a big apartment for her head. You believe me? 
A big apartment. Different kind of head. H A T. Head. A big apartment. Different kinds of tales. When they all come to the morning service, they come to make a show, to compete in that kind of a situation. I'm not talking a kind of situation like these kind of situations. I'm talking the unique situation. There's only one situation in this whole world that is related to God's move. Actually, this unique situation is under God's sovereignty. It is arranged by God. I like uh, Acts 17, verse 26, very much. Why? Because this verse says, out of one blood, right? God made all the nations. One blood. Regardless white people, black people, yellow people, brown people, red people, I tell you, and they all came out of one blood. Amen. Just one blood. And that was the blood God created in Adam. Out of one blood, that means out of one person. Out of one man, Adam. God made all the nations. Number one. Number one. So, in a good sense, we shouldn't have any concept about the skin colors because the blood of all the skin colors are one. Amen. Right? Medical science tells us it's hard to tell the difference of the blood of the different skins. The color of the skins are different in color but the blood is still one. Out of this one blood, this is also a strong proof that the Bible was inspired by God. Not in a scientific way, but in a factual way. The Bible just tells us the fact. God made all people in different skins out of one blood. Number one. Number two. Here you have another two words used. Times and boundaries. I tell you, the times were what? Were pre-appointed. That means ordained. Right. Don't think the uh, continent of America was uh, discovered by Columbus. It was up to him. It was not up to him. God ordained that this continent had to be just under the natives, the Indians. Not letting any other peoples know until you know the story. About 500 years ago, Columbus was crazy. <laughs> it might be he got a dream. I studied the world history. Of course, the world history didn't tell me Columbus got a dream. But now he picked up a thought. The concept to find out, to find out where is the boundary of this earth. By that time, you all know, you all know this much better, much better than I do. This south, the earth is a flight, just a flight, right? Flight. Columbus pick up the south. I like to go to the edge of the flight. So let us go. 
when I was a young student, my grammar teacher, who was a German descendant of America, USA citizen, but German descendant, you know, German character. <laughs> That old lady, Mrs. Stevens, so sick. <laughs> My brother here, he knows her also because she just loves us too. I don't know why. <laughs> no. She invited my brother, me, into her home. Probably because we too know the grammar much better than all the students, maybe. And now, See, uh, in teaching grammar, it's a, a kind of a poetry. Say on, say on, say on. That was by Columbus. <laughs> After many days sailing, no boundary. You know the story, right? All the sailors were mad with Columbus. Columbus just told her, say on, <laughs> say on. Today in the law recovery, let us say, say on. <laughs> now, I tell you, it was not 1,000 years ago. No. Some great men were there already, right? David was a great man. Solomon was the most wise man. They didn't have this out. That's right. That's right. To go to the edge of the flight of the earth. Right. They didn't. Only Columbus. Right. It was God. God appointed the time. Amen. God, you have this word. Appointed. Right, right. And Darby translated the word appointed, ordained. But I don't like Darby. In this sense, I like King James. It's appointed. God made an appointment when America should be exposed to the what? White people. To the descendant of Jephet. You know, Noah's prophecy. Jephet will spread. Right? And Jephet will stay under the tent of Shem. Very meaningful. Jephet itself has no God, has no tent. The tent, the covering, was with Shem. The Jews and all those other peoples. In Asia, the Shem. Well, I have too many important things to go, so I couldn't stay here too long. But anyhow, it was God appointed time that America was discovered. I just give you this one illustration to show you the entire mankind spreading. Not on the boundary. In the time was what? Determined right. by God's appointment. Yes. <laughs> Don't think 1918 while well, the Russian Tsars joining the first war fighting against Germany, with Britain and France, there was an accident. It was not an accident. That was what? Determined by God. Because of that fighting, Russia was made poor and weak, and that gave the best opportunity to Lenin to start the revolution of communism. And he was the first one to practice the ism, communism, invented by Russian 
Jew by the name Marx. You know that? Marx was a Russian Jew. He based upon the Bible, Acts 2 and 4. The apostles, all the disciples, have everything in common. Communism, the first part, the root of the word communism, came out of the Bible. Everything in common. Yeah, you know this. Marx, based upon the air, thought, invented communism. I studied the things, and his argument was this. Things in common are more profit, or things perfect are more profitable. He said, how about the street? The street. If your street is your street, private. And my street is my street, private. And his street is his street, private. There'll be no street. <laughs> so, you see, street is common. And the more things in common, the more profitable. This was his uh, reasoning, phrasing. I do not only know the Bible a little bit, I also know these things, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> then, don't think I'm preaching communism this morning, no. <laughs> <laughs> then, Lenin was the first one to pick up communism, to try and practice it in a country that was ruined by three things. By the royal family, the Tsar's family, by the Russian Orthodox Church, with all those monks and nuns. There, they were high rank. And by the third ruining class of people, landlords. Royal family, priests, and lord of lands. And all the other peoples were slaves, peasants, suffering. Especially Tsar was carrying out to fight down Germany. And that made the country poor. Then that gave Lenin a good chance to carry out his revo revolution within just one year. He succeeded, 1919. But the entire world, not one country would recognize a country of communism. They consider a country of communism like a wild beast. All the countries should blockade. Blockade this beast. Well, this is a bear, B-A-R. Don't, don't let it come out. You know what? <laughs> All the country made the decision not to recognize, but God has had his mind. Yeah. You know this way? You American, start to say, I like to check with you, Brian. You should have read your study, your uh, country's history. When and why? And where and by whom Russians as Soviet Russia was recognized? By whom? Whom and where? Could you tell me anyone? None of you? Where are the American scholars? <laughs> well, I am a China native. I'm a China, China man. I came from Galilee of China. <laughs> <laughs> Yet? Yeah? I'm not a scholar, but uh, in, I think it was 1924 that there was a grain purchase by the United States. Sit down, please. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he was under God's sovereignty, 1931. Mr. Hoover, the president of the USA, 
he was the first one representing USA as the first country to recognize that wild beast. To break the blockade. However, the president with his state secretary, who was the name? What was the name? Could you tell me? Stinson. USA took the lead to recognize that wild beast. That bro broke the blockade. They shocked the whole world. No other country agreed with that. But now it happened. So you so Russia was recognized. Another instant to show you all these international boundaries and all these international seasons. The word times actually here means seasons. If you look at you know, the internet, it translated into seasons. You know, a season, not just one hour, right? Season. A season is a period of time. The international seasons and boundaries were all ordained and appointed by God. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the creator, Amen. not only the creator of the universe, of billions of atoms of things, but especially the creator of man. And man, don't forget, was created in God's image. After God's likeness, God made many photos of himself. Every man is a picture of God. So this creation man was great, not a small thing. God doesn't care where the bears would be, where the lambs would be, where the tigers would be. I don't think God appointed anything for that. But since God made all peoples out of one blood, God ordained the seasons, the period of time, which race should be there, and the boundaries, which nation should be limited in that territory. These, all these were ordained by God. Amen. This is my teaching. Is this my teaching? No. This is clearly unveiled, right? By the word of God. Now, let me tell you. To fulfill God's economy, Remember when, right after the fall of Adam, God came. Even last night we referred to this, right? God came to call Adam, 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 where are you? You know, that was God's first calling. Because Adam, after taking in that evil one, his evil eyes were open. Not to see the good things, but see the nakedness of his being. Then he realized he was sinful, right? And he was shameful. And he tried his best to make some covering with the drying and dying leaves of the tree. You, you all know this story. It is, it is in Genesis 3. Then God came to find him. He was hiding himself. Eventually, no one can hide from God. And God actually didn't judge him. Right? Of course, God told him that God would 
discipline him. But God gave him the promise that a seed of woman <clears throat> will come to bruise the head of the serpent. I think you all know, if you are going to kill the serpent, don't cut its tail. If you cut the tail, it jumps more. <laughs> it just bruises his, his head right away, he dies. This was God's promise. But it was after 4,000 years, God came to bruise the head of the serpent. Too long, right? Too long, 4,000 years. Then in the midway, just after 2,000 years, God promised, promised Abraham. You know, by that time, man, as a collective, huh? mankind was waiting for God's fulfillment of his promise. God didn't do anything. So man got fallen, further down, down and down and down, down to Babel, right? Full of idols, putting up a tower to propagate their own name and so forth. You know the story. And that forced God to call out what? Abraham. And telling him, I will bless the entire earth through you. Well, even that promise was that strong and definite was not fulfilled until another 2,000 years. Then the Lord Jesus came. Who came? God came. Amen. My, this time God came. Amen. It was not a small thing. God came. Not came as he came to Abraham. Just in man's form. This time he came by pregnancy. Could you see this? By getting into man's blood. By getting man into man's flesh. By pregnancy. Staying in a virgin's home for nine months. Could you all believe? You read the, you read the Bible. You never thought about it. Sorry to say this. You shouldn't read the Bible that way. You have to read the Bible, think about every word. What is this? What is this? What is this? Right? And he stayed in a younger virgin womb for nine months. And then he came out of their own like just an ordinary babe. Right? And she came out of that own, not in a good hospital. <laughs> you know this story. In the ancient cab in a, a, a small hospital, even there was no room for him, and he was born into a manger. That was God. Now, listen, he came for what? He came, number one, to be a man, to put on human nature, to pick up humanity. This is not a small thing. Number one. Number two, to live a human life. To live a human life. And he lived for 33 and a half years. Not in a rich family, family, not in an easy life, but in a poor family, in a difficult, hard life. For 33 and a half years. Then he was put to death in a specific way. What way? Crucifixion. And he was buried, and he rose up. He came for all these things. Am I right? He came for all these things. All these things had only one 
go. That is what? That is to bring God into man by redemption. Could you follow me? And resurrection. You must realize all these points they are saying is He came. He came to do all these things, right? In order that he can bring man, bring God into man. Or in order that he, as God, could enter into man <coughs> through redemption and resurrection. You tell me, are these things small things? These things are great things. You all know to accomplish any great thing, you need a situation. It's now I come to the situation. You need a situation. Let me just illustrate to you. The old husband did have some hint that the Lord Jesus, his death must be something as it means like a cross. Why? Because in Deuteronomy, the prophecy did predict that the Lord Jesus would be put on a piece of wood. The Lord Jesus had to be hanged, hanged on a piece of wood. And in the type of the brass serpent, you know, the brass serpent was hanged upon a pole. Not only so, if you know the Jews' history, in the past overnight, when they slay, you know, when they slayed the, uh, the lamb, you know, by what way they slay? By this way, they bound the two front legs of the lamb on a piece of cross wood. This way. And there's another piece, standing wood. And they bound the back two feet. On the at the top end of the standing wood, right way. What was that? You tell me. The cross was there, and up to the time when Roman Bear used this way crucifixion to uh, carry out the death crime. Not of the ordinary citizens, Romans, but of the uh, well, the barbarians, male factors, the you know the uh, the uh, slaves and so forth. Very low class people. They use these cruel means to carry out the death crime. How could this way of death for Christ be fulfilled? You tell me. How could? There's no way. But by the Roman Empire. Okay, let me tell you. Christ as God came to go through all the process, to accomplish the great things, to come into man, and to redeem man and to uh, impart himself into man through resurrection. All these are great things. To carry out these great things, great things, surely you need a situation. You know what God did? Listen to this. You read the word history. Probably sorry to say, you read it just as textbook. You don't have any kind of understanding. But I also read, not only read, I studied, this textbook, by that time I was already saved. I was very interested to know the world history and uh, compare 
the world history with the Bible, that I may know the spiritual things more. So I got some significances from the reading and studying of the world history. I realize, I tell you, since Babel, you know, before Babel, there were no nations, right? Right? It was from the Babel time, nations were established. From that time till Roman Empire, on this earth, no change in po po political circle was so great at the Roman Empire, at the establishment of Roman Empire. The Jews, because they offended God, they lost their country, they were captured, right? 606 BC by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. There was a great change, but not too great. Then not after too long, there was another change from Babylon to Middle Persia. You know the story, right? Persia was ancient Iran. Iran, today, you know, everybody knows Iran, you know, uh, of the hostage. <laughs> You know, Iran. Iran was part of Middle Persia, who took over uh, the world from Babylon, including the Holy Land. And then it was not too long, you see, 330 something before Christ, Alexander the Great, a Macedonian, a Greek, became powerful. He defeated Medio, Persia, and took over the Holy Land. And he died when he was about 30 years of age. He ate too much, so he died. <laughs> then, from that time, you read the history. It was about 200 years of time, no settlement. No settlement. No settlement. No uh, complete, absolute establishment, always fighting so forth. Until, listen, until about less than 40 years before Christ was born. This is so-called less than 40 years AD, uh, BC, BC. Julius Caesar, he was the one that defeated Egypt, you know the story, around Mediterranean Sea, say, this is Mediterranean Sea, huh? around Mediterranean Sea, on the north, right, uh, on the north, I mean. on the north, on the north, and on the south, on the north, mainly you have Europe, right? Eastern Europe and Western Asia. And then on the south, you have Africa. And here you have Asia. This is the Mediterranean Sea. And here you have Portuguese and Spain and so forth. And there, of course, you have the little island that is England. <coughs> the Roman Empire defeated Every people, every race, every nation around the Mediterranean Sea. You, 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 you know the world history. And the last one people, the last one nation that was defeated by the Roman Empire, it was Egypt. When Egypt was defeated, that was just about less than 40 years before Christ. When Egypt was defeated, I tell you, Roman Empire was fully established. And then Julius Caesar adopted a man, you know the name, Augustus. And he succeeded Julius Caesar to be the head of the Roman Empire. And he was the first one who got the title of Emperor. So actually, he was the first Caesar of Roman Empire. You know, 
If I remember well, it was in the second year of Augustus, Christ was born. Let us read Luke chapter 2. Verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there would not out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. You see, here it tells you that Jesus was born under the first formal Caesar of Roman Empire. I must tell you, Roman Empire was ordained by God to be there 2,000 years ago and to be in the territory of the entire region of Mediterranean Sea. The human culture, firstly, you all know this, human culture firstly began with river. We call in history the river culture, right? And then from the river culture, it goes to the sea culture, Mediterranean Sea. You look at the map. Now, I must use the map. You see, here is Mediterranean. Right? Mediterranean. Firstly, you have Euphrates. That is the river culture season. Like in China, you have the Yellow River. You have Yangtze. That is China's River cultural Amen. season. Then China's culture goes to the sea, not ocean yet, just on the coast, the sea. Okay, this uh, Hebrew culture began from where? Euphrates. The Bible says the great river. From there, it goes to the sea, Mediterranean, around Mediterranean. That is the most cultured region 2,000 years ago. Many nations, many races, many people with many different languages, they all fight. Under that kind of a situation, nothing could be carried out. So what? So God used at least over 200 years to defeat all these nations around Mediterranean to establish a very well organized Roma Empire. You all know the political organization still today mostly follows what? Roman Empire with the law. I told you already about the, the history tells us the Western culture is based upon Hebrew religion, Greek philosophy, and Roman politics. The Romans were strong in political organization. So that keep the most civilized region of the entire world with many different languages, people, tongues, and nations in a very, very peaceful order. It was under that peaceful order the Lord Jesus was born peacefully into mankind. You read the Bible. You read the Bible. Not only so, it was the Roman Empire that used the most uh, primitive, cruel, means to carry out Christ's death, the cross. You see, God used the Roman Empire to crucify Christ for the fulfillment of Christ's death, of the way of Christ's death. Not only so. Let me go on. <coughs> then, after the resurrection, 
the gospel was there, right? After incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, hallelujah. The gospel was there. And this gospel need what? Need the spreading. Need the preaching. Preaching needs language. Preaching needs traveling. Pre to travel needs a passport. And to travel needs highways. You know, need the ways, the transportation. All these things are needed. And to travel needs what? Needs peace. Peaceful situation. Otherwise, in the night, people will come up and rob you and kill you. You haven't preached one gospel message yet, you got killed. <laughs> Roman Empire was used by God, you know what? To unify, to unify this most civilized region of the world. Unify. Unify. You can travel around the Middle East without any passport. No entry visa. No exit permit. You can travel to travel. To travel. Just, just like today in USA, you can travel in every state. Right? All states of USA are unified. So you can travel. All those regions around the Middle East Sea were unified. Every region was called a province. You know this, right? The province of Galicia, the province of Asia, the province of this province, Mastunia, the province of Achaia, and so forth. All those were provinces of that one big empire. People traveled. People did have the free, 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 full, full freedom of traveling and moving around. <sighs> That was the number one con convenience to the gospel preaching. Number two, Roman Empire unified the language. It made Greek their national language. Everyone studied Greek, everyone spoke Greek. You know, all the New Old Testament, all the New Testament nearly were written by all Gentiles. They're all Jews. Probably only one Gentile that was Rook. They all were Jews, yet they all root in Greeks. Because by that time, people around the Mediterranean see all kinds of Greeks. Not only so, you see God's sovereignty. Even during ah, that fighting time, that was close to 100 years BC. The Old Testament in Hebrew was translated by the 70 scholars into Greek. And this version is called, you all know, Septuagint. And it was translated in Alexander, Alexandria of Egypt, north of Africa. So the Old Testament was translated from the orig original language Hebrew into Greek. You have to know. Many times when the Lord Jesus was on the earth, he used Septuagint. Right. He used Septuagint. So language became no problem. Unification became no, no problem. Not only so. By that time, the traffic around the Middle East Sea was mostly by water, sailing boat. You know, Paul even traveled by that. Plus that, the Roman Empire built the highways from Rome to Palestine. In history, in human history, Roman Empire was the first country, first nation that built highways. You see the point? Now people can travel with safety. And then the peace and the safeguard. As long as you are a Roman citizen, you are under full protection. You know, Paul was a real Jew. 
but he got naturalized, right? And one day his real countryman was persecuting him, trying to kill him. He declared, I'm a Jew! No, I, I'm a Roman! <laughs> right away, he got the safeguard. Can you see? By all these, the gospel was preached preached to all the parts of the Roman Empire. So what? So the Roman Empire was ordained, appointed, used by God to accomplish his redemption, to form his gospel. Then it was used for the spreading of the gospel. You all know this. Listen to this. Satan always follows. What God used, Satan will come in also use. Then what? Then it was also the Roman Empire that persecuted the gospel. <laughs> the gospel was formed by the means of Roman Empire, right? And the gospel was propagated, preached by the means of the Roman Empire. But Satan came in to use what God uses. <laughs> or what God has used to damage, to persecute. You know the story, and that persecution didn't succeed. Rather, that persecution helped. Then Satan changed his tragedy. In the beginning of the fourth century, 300 something, Satan used the greatest Caesar of Roman Empire. You know the name, Constantine the Great. Satan used him to change the policy. Not to persecute Christianity anymore, but to welcome. Constantine made Christian faith a kind of national religion of the entire Roman Empire. He encouraged Roman citizens to be baptized. You don't need to believe, you don't need to pray, you don't need to know Christ. You just go to be baptized. You get some rooms, you get some silvers and so forth. My mind is not that good. You know, probably you know this. Once you got in the water and you come out, you got a lot of good things. <laughs> so not only thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand, millions people were baptized. All became Christians. That was the fulfillment of the tares. The tares. Okay? Okay. And that ruined Christianity. Not only so, Constantine the Great was a great, I don't call him a statesman, he was a great politician. He uh, looked into the situation under his power, many peoples, and the people still were fighting. But he realized this Christian faith, so-called Christianity, was an influence. And by that time, all the Christian leaders, they were fighting. Fighting mainly about what? Christ person, Christology. And mainly about what? Trinity. I tell you, this, these are the two devilish questions from the beginning. Today still, they are Christ person and Trinity. They were fighting. Then one day, Constantine says, don't fight, stop fighting, all come to me. In the city, he, de he designated Nessia. And he presided, and he presided under his influence and power, the Nicene Creed was made. You must realize. That became a factor of the ruining of Christianity. And then Constantine made himself the head of Christian church. At the same time, he made himself the head of the pagan religion. 
So at the same time, he was the head of the Christian religion and the head of the pagan religion. This is all in history. You should have read. But this you can see. What a ruin that became until more than two centuries, about two and a half, to the end of the sixth century, 500 something. The Pope was fully enthroned. And the papal system was fully established. And that was the formal formation and organization of the Catholic Church. And Catholic is a top good word. So they use it. That means the unique church, united church, the one church. Universal. Universal. Universally one. And that became a power. No one can say anything. Eventually, you know what? History tells us the Roman Empire kills Christians less than the Roman Church. The Roman Church killed more genuine Christians than the Roman Empire. Then that ruined the entire thing. Then what history called the Dark Age began for about nine centuries to ten centuries until 15 something. You know, there was the Reformation. The Reformation came in. Reformation came in. To make it brief, for the Reformation, God raised up Germany. God used Germany to back to protect Luther. Luther was bold. But the help Luther, the help the Reformation in the same principle, whatever is used by God to help his move, Satan would also use that thing. Then Satan used Germany to ruin Martin Luther's ministry. Luther was bold in justification by faith. But when he came to the point of the church, he became chicken. Just very weak. What due to this weakness, you know what? The first year state church was formed. The state church of Germany, that is the national church. Before that time, there was only the Catholic church. And some faithful individuals care here and there, but through Martin Luther's weakness, by the suppression of the Germany, of the kingdom of Germany, the first state church was formed. And this state church of Germany still stay, stays today in Germany. And most of the German people, they pay tax. Even today, if you don't pay church tax, you have to make some kind of a declaration to get the exemption. Right. And the laws we cover today there is, is what? Is encountering the problem of the state church. Right. Then following that, you have the Church of England, you have the Church of Denmark, you have the Church of uh, uh, Norway, State Church of Sweden. Sweden still, even Sweden so social, still has a king. And the king still is the head of the city church, state church. And the queen of, you know, the queen Elizabeth of England, see the head of all the British Christians. And every born British uh, child spontaneously is a member of the Church of England, of the Ang Ang Anglican Church, the Episcopalian Church. What a ruin! What a ruin! I just said this much. What is the time? Okay. This, on one hand, you could see how God used the world situation, right, to move for the carrying out of his economy. Amen. Then how Satan followed right. God to ruin 
God's work by the same means God used. After the Reformation, the good thing was this. Another thing followed. You all know this. What? The discovery of the new land. These two things liberated human mentality. You all know this. Don't you know this? Then a lot of modern sciences were invented. And the modern sciences produced modern machines, modern weapons. And these, with the free mentality, plus the new cover, new discovered land with the modern machines, guns, this change the world a lot. You all know this, right? Change the world a lot. Then, by that time, just right after the discovery of the new land, Spain was a power. Actually, you know this, right? Am I right? Columbus got the help from Spain to discover this new land. So Spain had a lot of right in this matter. Nearly Spain got the entire America. Still you have all the Los Angeles, San Francisco, all these are Spanish names. Right. Even I am a China man. I know all these things. <laughs> Los Angeles, the Angels. San Francisco, that means Saint Fran Francisco. That rich man becoming poor. You know the story. Probably you don't know who, are, who was Fra Francisco. Do you know who was Francisco? He was a rich man. And he sold everything. And he distributed every cent of his money for poor people. And he became the head of the three di divisions of Catholic people. Dominican, Franciscan, and Jesuit. Dominicans were rich. Franciscans were poor people. And Jesuits were scholars. These are the three divisions of Catholic Church. And that city, the Golden City, you know, San Francisco was called the Golden City. The gold city was named by a poor man's name. Very meaningful, San Francisco. It must be poor, don't be rich. OK. My Spain became a power. Even Spain tried to Christ and took over the Philippines. Still today, the Philippines is the unique country that is under Catholic influence. The so-called Latin America, you know the story. Central America, South America, all were Spanish speaking. Only Brazil, a little bit, Portuguese, but they're still 60%, 70% as Spanish. Spain became a power. On one hand, on the other hand, after Martin Luther's Reformation, because of his weakness, the church was never touched the problem. Then God raised up a man by the name Dungendorf. Dungendorf. He was a rich man. He had uh, his uh, kind of a uh, uh, rank uh, in the uh, present government, I, I, I don't like to get in details. I, actually, 30 years ago, we translated their history. And it was by that time, many, many, many free-thinking Christians discovered many different truths, such as presbytery, such as baptism by immersion, such as holy nights, sanctification by faith and so forth. All these truths were discovered by free-thinking Christians after Luther. Before Luther, you know, the, the Christians were controlled by the dark age, by Catholicism. No one dared to have any right, thinking. But after the Reformation, 
mentality was released, mm. and the Bible was released. So many free-thinking Christians discover a lot of truths, and every dis every one who discover a new truth become a founder of a denomination. And then by that time, quite a number of different brethren churches. You have Grace Brethren, you have this kind of brethren, that kind of brethren. Uh, yeah, even Mennonite, you see, what, right? They are a kind of brethren. Right. They were all resolved in what time? In the 17th and 18th century. Right. 1600 something and 1700 something. And these free thinking Christians who discovered and practiced the newly found. Uh, uh, truth is, uh, they all formed some new denominations. They were persecuted by whom? By Catholic Church and the State Church. Even the State Church in North Europe persecuted these free thinking Christians more than the Catholic. So many of them, they just couldn't remain in their own country. It was by that time in Bohemia where Hitler started the Second War. That was the place. Bohemia. Dindendorf had a big land. So he told those persecuted Christians, come to my land. And they, most of them went there. And most of them were from a place which was called Moravia. Moravia. And then they all went there. When they got there, they were still dissenting. Some Presbyterian, some Baptist, some uh, people for just for sanctification by faith, all these kind of people, they were fighting day and night. One day, Dindinov called them together, the leaders, saying, We are here, brothers. Right? You are all persecuted. We are here. Why are you still fighting? We, you must sign a contract from today. Stop these different fight, different doctrines. This is essential. We all be one in Christ. In brief, they all agree with it. And they signed. Then I think the next day, they had the Lord table. There was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right. A great revival. And from that day, hundreds, hundreds of the so-called Moravian brothers went out to other land, mostly to the new found land, America. Even today, you know, a number of Moravian churches in USA. It was by that time, John Wesley came to us on the same boat. The storm was there, scared people to death. He saw just a group of people praying, singing at the corner of the boat. And he went and he found out those were Moravians. And by that, John Wesley, John Wesley, a revivalist, found that he was not saved. He himself was not saved. He told us, he was through the Moravian brothers, he got saved. Oh, yeah. Then he went back to England, right away he went down to Bohemia to stay with Dindendorf for quite a time. And he told us, I read all these things, that if he was not burdened for England, he would stay in Bohemia for his whole life. Mm -hmm. And you have to know, when she went back to England, that was the time France had the strongest revolution. And that French revolution was just spreading to England, to all through England society. And John Wesley and George Whitfield, those powerful evangelists, they preached not in sanctuaries, but on the street corners. They stopped the revolution influence. And they changed the British society. Right. So, in Bohemia, a 
and church life was practiced under the leadership of Dengendorf. That, according to history, we consider as the first practice of the church life in the recovery. It was good, but a lot of defects. The light, the light they saw was not that adequate, but it was good. Then, listen to this, just after one century, that was 1700 something. One century later, 1828 and 29, God raised up, raised up the brethren in England. Mm. Under the leadership of John Nelson Darby, I must tell you, when these brothers raised up, they saw light much more. Oh, the light just flooded in. So some people say, Luther unlocked the Bible from the prison. But Luther never opened up the Bible until Darby. Darby and his contemporaries, they opened up the Bible. You must know, I mentioned it a few times, today the highest theological school, theological seminary is founded according to brethren teachings. And the top one is the one Dallas Theological Seminary founded by Griffith Thomas. And they teach what? They teach their theology is based upon Dr. Scofield's reference Bible and his uh, Bible uh, current course. I tell you, this is all the what? Spreading of the brethren doctrines. Yet, they would never take the brethren way to practice the church life. And the brethren's move was so prevailing and so strong, the Penton put out an article with the statistics telling us that the brethren move was stronger, was more prevailing, was bigger than Luther's Reformation. But mostly the world people don't, didn't know it. Why? Because Reformation was very worldly. The Reformation under Martin Luther's hand was very worldly, using the kings, and you all know, Reformation invented the newspaper. Today's newspaper was not there before Reformation. The first thing that invented and used newspaper for propaganda was Reformation. But the brethren, they kept everything covered, <coughs> secret. Today it's hard for you to get a photo of John S. and Darby. Among them, no biographies, no autobiographies. They cover everything. Absolutely, the left word, I just said this much, the, the powerful, quite prevailing, when Jamaica, British Jamaica, your last century had a big storm, suffered so much, you know, the British uh, Brethren Assemblies sent the donations to rescue those suffering Christians. The amount sent by the Assemblies was much bigger than the fund sent by the British government. Right. Right. Okay, now, one more point I stop today. Because of two things that were needed. Number one, by that time, the gospel didn't go to Africa. It didn't go to Asia. It didn't go to South America, the gospel. There was a need to spread the gospel to every corner of this earth, the mud. And number two, I tell you, during that period of time, the light came 
to the brethren. That should be brought to every part of this earth. For these two kinds of needs, God did one thing. This needs, in history, oh no, the defeat of Amada. Didn't you know? The British Navy defeated the Spanish Amada. That was just about a little over 200 years ago. Before, in the 18th century, 1700 something, the leading power on this earth was Spain. And Spain was absolutely Catholic. If the world were still under Spain's influence, the entire globe will be under Catholicism like today's Latin America. God couldn't suffer that. So God raised up a small island country, Britain. You know the story. Just so little fighting, so easy. Amada, the big fleet of the strong power Spain was defeated. You know what? Then Britain became the power, the power. Not one of the powers, the, the power on this whole earth. It was called a country without sin sight. Because around the globe, everywhere is British colony. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. British had a lot of colonies, big farm to produce things for them. So Britain became very rich for two centuries. But today, especially after the two wars, even more after the second war, Roosevelt proposed to release all the people. No more colonies. And Britain had to go along. So Britain lost every farm. Britain only uses its two and a half islands. Formerly these two and a half islands were gardens, you know, to the British people. There were gardens, you know gardens, in the yard. But now, these two and a half islands became their farms. So, they have no other way to make a living. They have to work on the two and a half other farms, plus a little bit spot in Hong Kong. <laughs> and the China, the communist, is utilize, uh, uh, utilizing Hong Kong. If they want Hong Kong, they don't need to send one army. Uh, one soldier. They just sent two million old women and plus three million babies. They took, they will take over Hong Kong. <laughs> okay. Listen to this. Britain became a power. A world power. The power. See. Drought the Protestant influence to every continent of the globe. It was under her power and influence that the gospel was sent to every continent, to every corner of this earth. And you have to realize, in the past centuries, most of the missionaries were British people. Right. And the money spent for the spreading of the gospel were punk stirrings, not U.S. dollars. Right. Just in this last half century, you got used to Britain very much. Not only so, you know, in those past two centuries, my, the spiritual giants, one after another, were raised up. And the big writers, they put out some books really witty, <clears throat> the best books. I'm right? Not like today. Today there's no. But that in the last century, many, end of last century, beginning of this century, my, all the speakers in case convention and all those great writers, great lights were released. Could you see? The world situation has too much to do with the Lord's move. Right. But greeting was not faithful. Not only not faithful to God, but also not faithful to man. 
Firstly, in the first war, he promised, see, written, promised if the Jews would help them to make the weapons, ammunition, fighting for fighting against Germans after the war, Britain will release Palestine to the Jews. At the same time, secretly, Britain promised Jordanians. The Arabs saying, if you would join us, fight against the Turks. You know, but at that time, the Turks joined, what? joined Germany, fighting against the Allies. Britain said, if you would join us, fighting against the Turks, after the fighting, we'll give you the Holy Land as your, as your country land. And then at the same time, Britain also promised, secretly probably, to the Turks something. And after the war, that means uh, Britain's one daughter engaged two and a half boys. <laughs> two and a half boys. And after all the trouble uh, were over, no one, no one got the girl. <laughs> And no one knows where the girl went. <laughs> so the Jews were offended. Right. And the Jordanians were offended. Right. And the Turks were offended. <laughs> to make story short, then you know, in this first war, Britain was the leading one to fight due to their strive of colonies in Africa. Their power was in Africa due to that, but they fought at home, in Europe. I just stopped here probably tonight, uh, this morning. I speak uh, tomorrow, not, tomorrow morning. We will have a good conclusion of the present situation. Thus far you could see, okay, God used Roman Empire to prepare the gospel and to spread the gospel. And Satan also used the Roman there to form the Roman church to persecute and to ruin the church. Then God used Germany to beg to support the Reformation and Satan also used Rome, Germany to ruin the Reformation. And then God used Britain to keep a good order around the globe for two and a half centuries that the gospel was preached to every corner of this earth and the truths were sent out to everywhere. Yeah. Even in China, we got much, much benefited to the brothers writing. This is the point probably many of you never read so much of the brothers' writings as we did. <laughs> I told you already, the top theology of today is the brother theology. At least four kinds of theologies. You may say you are a graduate of theological school. I would say, what can theology? You see, even New York City College has a seminary. That is a secular seminary, teaching secular theology. Am I right, Jim? And now on that top, you have better ones. The top ones is Dallas Theological Seminary, teaching brethren theology. If you have never touched, touched brethren theology, you don't know what is theology. So the Britons rising up was very much used by God for the spreading of the gospel and for the spreading of the truth. But due to her unfaithfulness, she lost and she is still losing. And then which country was raised up? America. I put the two maps here this morning. We don't have the time. You look at the old world map. This is the old world map. Without America, not discovered. Only the Indians know that, <laughs> right? Only the Indians, the Red Indian, they knew, they knew America. No others know. With this old 
world where is the connecting center? That is here, the Holy Land. The Holy Land is the connecting center that connects Europe, Asia, and Africa. Could you see this? Could you see this? Yes, Holy Land is the western part of Asia, but it joins Africa and joins Europe. That was God's sovereignty to choose that Holy Land as a focus of the ancient globe, of the ancient populated globe. For what? For the formation of the gospel and for the spreading of the gospel. And the gospel was just formed here, here. And it was spread around here, right away to the populated world. Isn't this true? Now, today, especially after the Second War, what is the center? So look at the map. What is the center of, the, of today's populated world? USA. USA. This way or this way, it is at the cross center. It's tropical. No, not tropical. It's cold region. No, not cold region, but temperate. Very good for living, for growing things. And it has, I tell you, this center only has a sea, small sea. But that is the center of the ancient human civilization. But now, this center has two oceans. And this is the big eagle, the big hawk, h o w And this big eagle or hawk has two big wings. The two oceans. And two oceans, it has two fleets. And fleet number six is all the time here to protect Atlantic. And fleet number six, seven is always here, always here. Not to protect Taiwan, nor Japan, but to protect <laughs> Guam, Hawaii, and the Pacific. You has never fought any country on herself, her own land. It has two wings. Now it becomes the center. One or two words are finished. Whatever you has does, the entire world follows today. Financially, industrially, scientifically, politically, militarily, religiously, scripturally, spiritually, whatsoever. <laughs> Whatever is here in this cross center, everywhere follows. And the U.S. has really the world language, not the British English, but the American English. I say a word to you. The British language <coughs> pronounce schedule, schedule. <laughs> Even today you go to Hong Kong, you say all schedule, the Hong Kong people don't understand. They are under the British colony, yet they don't understand British English. You have to say schedule. <laughs> schedule is American English. You have to speak American language, then you'll be prevailing, you'll be on the shoulders of others. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. This is for what? You tell me for what? For what? Praise the Lord! Yeah. For God's will on earth to carry out His recovery. Yeah. The Roman prayer was for the gospel. Germany was for the Reformation, right. and Britain was for the spreading of the gospel and the truth. Yeah. What is in there today? The recovery. The recovery. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Within 20 years, the recovery has gone yeah. to the continent, yeah. just from America in the world wide language. You know the story. It's not a small thing. 
Right. I just gave you a sketch this morning. Then tomorrow morning, we will see something more, and we know where we are and what is our responsibility. Amen. We must see we are now right at the cross center. Right. My, my, our responsibility is tremendous. Yeah. And also it's wonderful. Yeah. This is why I'm crazy. Yeah. This is why I like everything American. Yeah. I told all of you, because you came from China, from Japan, Korea, whatsoever, you must be Americanized. Yeah. America, America. God bless America. use America to carry out to spread his recovery that he may come back. Amen. 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 If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.